money, funding, tendering and commissioning. So there's lots of different ways to answer this question depending on who you are as an organisation. Disability Cornwall supports a county-wide network of user-led organisations and invited members to training on tendering and commissioning. And today's about tender and procurement. Well, how you go about it for start off with. And also there's other organisations which should be applying for grants for them, which we are not at the moment. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's obvious that tendering is going to become more and more important for the voluntary sector. And when I've seen some of the tendering forms, I've just suddenly thought, oh, it's impossible, I'll never be able to do that. But the way it's been explained and the sim everything has been simplified, um, I feel a lot more confident now as to how I could actually complete a tendering application form. I've found out from today's session how to write a funding bid more professionally and what the threat procedure is and what terminology they do and don't look for and how to make sure the funding bid stands out from all the other organisations that haven't joined us here today. So it's been useful? Yes, very useful. I assumed it was for the big boys and I don't think it is now. Previously I thought that only large companies or large organisations could actually um, be considered for a tendering for a tender. But now, obviously, I've realised that a smaller organisation could actually stand as just as much chance as a bigger organisation. They are just trying to find out if you are the right organisation. The landscape is changing. It's changing almost daily at the moment with the spending reviews. Councils and PCTs are going to have to try and get better value for money out of their contract. And hopefully this course helps smaller organisations because smaller third sector organisations have this automatic fear that bigger third sector organisations will get all the business, whereas quite often smaller third sector organisations have much more local knowledge, they're far more um, integrated into the community, they understand these populations much better, they really understand about um, personalisation of services and they really understand their service user communities. And so it's really important that they are helped to gain some of the skills that larger organisations take for granted and certainly the private sector takes for granted. So what I want you to do is write down four strengths about your organisation. What four things is your organisation really good at? Nobody has to pay to join our organisation and they've all got learning disabilities. Good treasurer because I've turned the accounts around. When I took over. <laughs> We've got some very good services like the Discover magazine, the Dial Telephone Helpline and the DC 100 which is a consultative tool. And so that, with the local knowledge, helps us to shape the services and help to shape the organisation to provide very good value for money. Yeah. Well, we've got a, a um, happy staff and um, very motivated um, people working for us. And we believe that we uh, specialise in what we do in Cornwall. What it's about is making sure you translate what you're doing as a service really well and helping commissioners understand that so that they can understand the benefits of your service and the third sector in particular is not very good particularly smaller organizations about shouting about how good they are third spring is we work well with other associated organizations that that do similar work to ourselves. I think working together has been advised and advisable for the past um, three or four years especially. Lots of organisations have been reluctant to do that for fear of losing their independence. But now I think it's, it's very necessary and it's good um, because you can, you can work on the, you can work with the skills that other organisations offer and I think again that was um, part of the benefit of today showing that working together 
is good for the tendering process as well, and necessary in some cases because of the amounts of money that you'd be asking for. I think one of the big barriers for um, any um, organisation that perhaps campaigns is it's quite difficult to be a campaigning organisation and then also change your relationship with the commissioners so that you become a partner developing services and that's something that some organisations really struggle with and some of the work that we did today was around actually you can do both disability organisations can campaign but they may also need to have a person that is doing the building relationships with the commissioners to understand what those commissioners want in their services moving forwards to make sure that you can match those up with the disability organisations that um, are on the ground. What do you hope people will take away from today? It would be have the confidence to, to get on and, and, and tender because um, it isn't some mystical science. It isn't something that only the private sector can do or only big charities can do. So it would be the passion that they have for their services to translate that into the paperwork and translate that into their interviews so that they win this work um, and actually they retain it within their communities rather than it going out to perhaps some of the larger organisations that may not um, give the level of focus that a smaller organisation can do. Is there anything you want to add? No, just thank you very much. If you've been responsible for the funding of it, thank you very much indeed.